12-year-old Timothy and 16-year-old Jeff Slayton woke up with a start. There was a stranger in their room reaching out for them. Scared, they called out to their mother, but there was no response. Linda Slayton and her two kids moved to 303 North Brunel Parkway, Lakeland, Florida, and a few weeks later tragedy struck the Slayton family, forever altering their lives. Linda Slayton had gone to bed, hoping for a better tomorrow, but the tomorrow never came. It was an incident that would bring an end to the boys' happy childhood and forever change the trajectory of their lives. Who could be responsible for this evil? Welcome back to Crime Mystic, where we shed light on under-the-radar cases across the country. Today, we are looking at the 37-year-old cold case of Linda Slayton, which finally received closure in 2018. But first, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please hit the subscribe and like buttons. Now, without any further ado, let's dive into the story. Today's case takes us to Lakeland, Florida. Lakeland is known for its rich culture and history, with the city offering a glimpse into the past through its various museums and historic districts. The Lakeland History Room is a treasure trove of historical materials and collections showcasing the city's heritage. With documents, photographs, maps, artwork, and more, the room provides resources for in-depth research and preservation of personal materials. Living in Lakeland offers a unique blend of recreational and historical attractions. The city's many historic districts, such as Munn Park, Beacon Hill, Alta Vista, Biltmore Cumberland, and Dixieland, contribute to a charming and nostalgic ambiance. The people of Lakeland are friendly, kind, and fun-loving. These are the qualities that drew Staten and her family to settle in Lakeland. Born on March 8, 1950, Linda Slayton grew up fast. At 16, she had already given birth to a boy child, and by 19, she had her second son, Timothy. She later married Frank Slayton, the father of the kids, but the marriage was not a happy one. Frank was addicted to alcohol and often abused his wife and two kids. It even got disastrous whenever he was drunk. As the years went by, the abuse got worse, and despite Linda's strong spirit, she couldn't endure the abuse anymore. Linda divorced Frank in 1974, ending her nine years of marriage to Frank. After finally divorcing him, Linda and her two sons, Jeff and Tim, sought a fresh start in Lakeland, Florida. The years following the divorce were not easy for the family as Linda faced financial struggles and had to make ends meet by sewing her own clothes and relying on state assistance. Despite the hardships, Linda was a loving and devoted mother, always putting her son's well-being first. Linda's close relationship with her sister, Judy Butler, was well known. The two often enjoy a regular Friday morning coffee date. Due to financial constraints, the family did not own a car, and the boys relied on their bicycles for local transportation. Timothy, who played football, often received rides to and from practice from his coach, Joseph Mills. Linda's parents lived a short distance away, allowing for frequent visits between the family members. Many times, the children have had to visit their grandparents to get what to eat. On the 3rd of September, 1981, Jeff came back from football practice and saw no food at home. He was very angry with his mother before going to his grandparents' house to eat. By the evening of that same day, he apologized to his mom for his bad behavior, and the family went to sleep. On the morning of Friday, September 4, 1981, Judy Butler arrived at Linda Slayton's apartment for their usual coffee session. She knocked on the front door repeatedly, but there was no response. Concerned, Butler decided to investigate further and circled around the building. As she approached Linda's bedroom window, she noticed that the screen had been removed. Peering inside, she made a horrifying discovery. Linda was lying on her bed in an unnatural position, her clothes disheveled, and a wire coat hanger tightly wrapped around her neck. Overwhelmed by the shock, Butler's distress caught the attention of an apartment maintenance worker named John Allen, who immediately dialed 911. Within moments, investigators and emergency personnel arrived at the scene. However, they found the front door securely locked, prompting them to enter through a window. Inside, they came face to face with the tragic sight of Linda Slayton's lifeless body on the bed. Her dress had been pulled down, exposing her, and blood was evident around her vaginal area. Strikingly, there were no signs of a struggle or any apparent disturbance in the apartment, aside from Linda's underwear and shoes scattered on the floor. 
In the midst of the commotion, Jeffrey and Timothy Slayton, Linda's two sons, were found peacefully asleep in their beds upstairs, unharmed. Emergency personnel quickly escorted the bewildered boys out of the apartment, but not before Timothy unwittingly caught a glimpse of the grim crime scene that would forever haunt his memory. Recalling the traumatic experience, he later expressed, I saw the crime scene. It still burned in my brain today. The shocking discovery of Linda Slayton's lifeless body sent shock through the community and the police went to work. The horrifying details surrounding her murder, from the removal of the window screen to the disturbing state of her clothing and the wire coat hanger used in the heinous act, showed how terrifying the crime was. The search for answers began, with investigators meticulously piecing together the evidence in hopes of bringing closure to Linda's grieving family and apprehending the perpetrator responsible for this heinous crime. The findings of the medical examiner were nothing short of horrifying. It was clear that Linda Slayton was raped and strangulated. In an effort to gather crucial evidence, forensic specialists meticulously collected biological DNA samples from her body, as this will be crucial in identifying the perpetrator. As the investigation unfolded, the dedicated team of investigators and crime scene technicians turned their attention to Linda's bedroom, hoping to unearth additional clues. Their thorough examination led them to a critical discovery, a palm print imprinted on the windowsill. Every piece of evidence found its way into the national database, eagerly awaiting a match that would crack the case wide open. However, despite their relentless efforts, no matches were found, leaving the investigators grasping at straws. In their quest for answers, the investigative team cast a wide net, interviewing anyone who had even the slightest connection to Linda, no matter how remote. Family members, neighbors, co-workers, and even Linda's ex-husband were all subjected to extensive questioning. Linda's ex-husband, Frank and her son Jeff, were considered suspects during different periods of the investigation, but they were found innocent. The gathering of DNA samples became an integral part of the investigation as they sought to eliminate or identify potential suspects. However, the outcomes were disheartening. No matches were discovered and no concrete evidence pointed towards the perpetrator. The case grew colder with each passing day, leaving investigators and loved ones frustrated and disheartened by the lack of progress. Years turned into decades, and Linda Slayton's murder became one of those haunting cold cases that persisted in the annals of unsolved mysteries. Since the tragic events of 1981, significant advancements have been made in the field of DNA technology. In recent years, one particular technique, genetic genealogy, has emerged as a groundbreaking tool in the investigation of unsolved murders. It was this very technique that ultimately led to the identification of Linda Slayton's killer in 2018, providing a long-awaited breakthrough in the case. Using the DNA evidence collected from the crime scene back in 1981, forensic experts embarked on the process of genetic genealogy. Through meticulous analysis and comparison, they were able to develop a DNA profile that would serve as a crucial piece in solving the mystery surrounding Linda's murder. The profile pointed investigators towards a potential suspect, Joseph Clinton Mills, a figure who had been a significant part of Timothy Slayton's life as his football coach. Mills, a 20-year-old at the time of the original investigation, had previously been questioned by investigators but denied involvement in Linda's murder. Determined to confirm the genetic genealogy match, investigators initiated surveillance on Mills. They intercepted Mills' household trash before it could be collected by the garbage truck. They meticulously combed through its contents. Their tireless search paid off when they discovered a crucial piece of evidence, a fragment of medical tape containing DNA. With this discovery, they sent the sample to the FDLE crime lab for analysis. The moment of truth arrived as the DNA from the medical tape was compared to the genetic profile obtained from the crime scene evidence dating back to 1981. The results left no room for doubt. It was a positive match. Joseph Clinton Mills, the once questioned football coach, had now been implicated in Linda Slayton's murder. On December 12, 2018, investigators arrested Joseph Clinton Mills. He was charged with first-degree murder as well as burglary and sexual battery relating to Linda's tragic death. 
During the initial interrogation, Mills claimed to have little knowledge of the incident but later altered his statement. He claimed that Linda had invited him to her home for consensual rough sex, where he discovered her already with the wire coat hanger around her neck. However, investigators swiftly refuted his account, emphasizing the falsehood of his claims based on previously uncovered evidence. Eventually, on February 9, 2022, Joseph Clinton Mills, now 61 years old, pleaded guilty to the rape and murder of Linda Slayton. In light of his guilty plea, Mills was handed four consecutive life sentences without the possibility of parole. By accepting this plea deal, Mills managed to evade the death penalty. As stipulated by Florida law, he serves his life sentence at the Reception and Medical Center in Union County, Florida. Following their mother's tragic death, Jeffrey and Timothy Slayton were raised by their maternal grandparents, who provided a loving and nurturing environment for them. However, the lingering fear of the killer returning haunted both men, causing them to live with a constant sense of unease, perpetually glancing over their shoulders. One particular detail left an indelible mark on Timothy's memory. Throughout the years, he held onto a photograph of his recreational football team prominently displayed on his bedroom wall. To his dismay, the picture included his coach, Joseph Mills, who would later be revealed as his mother's murderer. This sad reminder of the connection between the man he once trusted and the unimaginable tragedy that befell his family served as a constant reminder of the dark chapter in their lives. Today's story shows that evil can hide in the most unassuming places. What are your thoughts on this case? Do you think that justice was been served? Please take a moment to share your thoughts in the comment section below.